Is it water with the sheep in the in the box? I've recently seen a few people claiming that it's ridiculous to say that we're often taught not to really think about political messaging and media, that a lot of the time people willfully ignore it, or at least just don't put too much thought into it, and enjoying the media without really critically interpreting it in any way, or think about it very critically at all. And that's fine, but I keep getting people saying that that's in some way a personal attack, or that my assertion that all art is political, and even openly political art often gets overlooked, was exaggerating in some way. So so I'm going to briefly take a moment to demonstrate my point and, crucially, to provide an example that literally everyone who sees this video will be aware of. Let's discuss the politics of chocolate rain, because it's relevant now more than it was in 2007. Before we do, I feel it's important to point out that Tay himself has been far from reluctant to insert politics into his art, to the point where he released a song in 2011 basically just pointing out how much capitalism sucks, which is pretty great, and also, it is a fucking banger. Mama, you got a me make me understand all the numbers why daddy's on a welfare plan turning 30 40 50 gotta move in with my parents and the stocks go up but the jobs disappear Oh, and it really pissed off this joker in the comments who apparently made an ANCAP version of the national anthem of the Soviet Union, so, you know, upsetting the right people. Arise, libertarians, above totalitarians, our guide is the mighty invisible hand. Reject state controllers, collectors and patrollers Our choices are better than government plans Taxation is a form of theft Free markets and free trade are best. Now, if I told you that Chocolate Vein was about race relations, the legacy of mistreatment of black people throughout much of American history, and systemic oppression, would you believe me? In all likelihood, probably not, right? Because most people know the song for its catchy tune, low production values, and above all, the novelty of such a smooth, deep voice coming out of such a small, young guy. And honestly, who among us, apart from the weirdos like me, has gone back to re-watch Chocolate Rain, a dead meme from 2007 in the past decade or so? Zonde hasn't even really been shy about openly talking about this, and honestly, it's not subtle at all, but I've spoken to enough people who genuinely don't realise the political messaging in the song and the idea that, in general, we tend not to notice political messaging in our entertainment media, that I felt compelled to make this, honestly. So what we're going to do here is go through the song line by line, and then at the end we're going to hopefully tie all these threads together into a nice little bow, and I can link this video to people on the internet in order to win petty arguments. Let's go. Okay, so first off, the titular chocolate vein, according to Zonde himself, is supposed to represent institutional racism, which means that all the effects described within the lyrics can be extrapolated from that. Likewise, the history crashing through your veins part is just a further reference to this. Chocolate vein. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Clearly a reference to the fact that in Western society, some are lucky enough to be born white and thus not suffer or struggle with institutional racism, whereas those in the black community have to feel the pain brought on by it constantly, whether it be police repression or casual racism in, for example, the job market. Chocolate rain, a baby born will die before the sin. This line is controversial, and no one really knows what it means, though my interpretation is that it's a reference to the high infant mortality rates in the black community due to a number of issues, mostly stemming from inequality. That before the sin part is in reference to the Christian belief that infants and babies who die all go to heaven as they have not yet been tainted by sin. Chocolate rain. The school books say it can't be here again. This is something I've actually talked about before, but in the West we tend not to learn much about the atrocities and immoral actions carried out by our home nations, and when we are, it's played off as just something that was in the past. It's over now, no need to dwell on it. And as a British guy, I can tell you firsthand, we don't learn about all the awful shit committed under the British Empire and the legacy of colonialism and pillaging of Africa and much of Asia, because if we did that, a lot of people might start to ask why we don't just try and rectify the problems we caused, considering the 
because a lot of the reason Africa struggles so much to this day is as a direct result of that legacy. Likewise, from what I've been told, in the US the Civil War is often taught as an issue of states' rights, and things like the Civil Rights Act, Jim Crow, and again, the legacy of slavery, are mostly portrayed as things of the past, and inequality isn't really acknowledged as thoroughly as it perhaps should be. Chocolate rain. The prisons make you wonder where it went. This is a clever one, because it could have two possible meanings. On the one hand, there's the obvious fact that black people make up a disproportionate amount of the prison population due to a combination of factors, mostly over-policing, police corruption, and a legal system weighed against them. Legislation specifically designed to target black people, judges who give them longer sentences than white people for the same crimes, and socio-economic issues. Or, it's a reference to the 13th Amendment, which outlawed the practice of slavery except as punishment for crime, which is one of the many reasons so many private prisons are filled up as much as possible. The US replaced chattel slavery with prison slavery, and considering the fact that an overwhelming number of prisoners are black, well, not all that much has changed, has it? Chocolate rain. Not entirely certain about this one, but my interpretation is that this is referring to the fact that people will point to successful or powerful black people like Barack Obama, and remember that this song came out in 2007, the year before Obama's inauguration, and proclaim the end of racism, when in reality, all that means is a very small number of black people can beat the odds, but that doesn't mean that all of them can, or that they have the same opportunities. Chocolate rain. Zoom the camera out and see the light. Obviously, this is just to say, look at the bigger picture, but it could also refer to the way that people will point to a minority of bad or criminal black people in order to try to paint all of them with the same broad brush. And only looking at the whole black community can one accurately assess the situation. Chocolate rain Or has to be falling yesterday Chocolate rain Only in the past is what they say. Again, this is a reference to the fact that in Western societies we are told that maybe some bad shit happened, but it's all in the past, even though as recent events has shown, this is not the case. Chocolate rain with your neighbourhood insurance rates. This is a legacy of Jim Crow, but black neighbourhoods have massively inflated insurance rates, as much as 70% higher in some areas, because of the presumed criminality of black people and black neighbourhoods. Chocolate rain makes us happy living in a game. A lot of well-off white people, rather than joining in trying to fight to rectify the situation and standing in solidarity with black people, will instead gate themselves off in so-called gated communities, isolated from the outside world and living in fear of an exaggerated black menace. Chocolate rain made me cross the street the other day. Pretty self-explanatory, but a lot of people will cross the street to avoid black men because, again, there is an unfounded assumption of criminality and violent tendencies. Chocolate rain Society doesn't like to acknowledge systemic racism, so you'll very rarely actually hear real discussions about it in mainstream media. Chocolate rain Control. Fear keeps people in line, and governments are all too happy to use the otherness and presumed criminality of people of colour to control and inspire fear in white people for votes. I probably don't need to go into detail here, just look at Donald Trump's rhetoric and that of conservative media. Chocolate rain. Say it publicly and you're insane. Again, it's not socially acceptable a lot of the time to openly discuss these issues, and sometimes will result in an argument with a conservative who just thinks that blacks are genetically predisposed to crime or something, because some people are just incapable of understanding the concept of systemic oppression. Chocolate rain. No one wants to hear about it now. A lot of people think that racism is over and will just refuse to continue to have the conversation. Chocolate rain. Which real hard it goes away somehow. As we're seeing a lot with the protests in the US right now, a lot of white people are more than happy to critique the police and call for an end to racism, but unwilling to fight for it and condemn those who do. Chocolate rain makes the best of friends begin to fight. Chocolate rain. But did they know? In the light. Arguments over racism in society often devolve into outright fights, and the reason for that is that often white people refuse to listen and don't really understand the struggles of black people, a lot of the time just taking critiques of white cultural systemic oppression personally because they didn't bother to consider the experiences of their black friends. Chocolate rain Every February washed away Chocolate rain 
stays behind his colors celebrate. Black History Month in the US is in February. The media is awash with images of MLK and we get to pretend that he wasn't literally assassinated by the US government and that we can celebrate the end of racism only to go back to normal in March when many of the issues people like MLK and Malcolm X fought for are still problems to this day. But we're not allowed to discuss them after March 1st. Chocolate rain. The same crime has a higher price to pay chocolate rain. The judge in juries where it's not the face. As mentioned earlier, black people often face longer sentences for the same crimes. In fact, on average, it's about 20% longer. But it's just a coincidence, I'm sure. Nothing to do with racism. Chocolate rain. Economy. Socioeconomic factors, some of which are deliberate, caused poverty to become rife in black neighborhoods, and systemic racism prevents this from changing too much. Chocolate rain turns that body into GDP. This could easily be a reference to a few things, from the concept of wage slavery under capitalism, the history of black slave labor in the US, or indeed the aforementioned concept of prison slave labor. Black bodies are often used in physical laboring jobs, and in many ways, the US was built by slavery, or black bodies, and the descendants of the people who built America are now languishing in poverty. Chocolate rain The milker blames the baby's DNA Chocolate rain but test scores are how much the parents make. I'm not going to go too in depth here because Sean made a two and a half hour long video about it, but The Bell Curve is an infamously racist book which blames many of the problems black people face on low IQ and advocates for eugenics. The test scores line is in reference to the fact that multiple studies have shown that children living in poverty are likely to get lower grades than richer kids and therefore IQ is more about economics than intelligence. Chocolate ring. In France the, other night. the French love their protests and flipping cars is just something they do a lot of. There's a reason why French workers have better rights than most of Europe, let's just leave it at that. Chocolate rain cleans the sewers out beneath Mumbai. I believe this is a reference to the caste system in India, in which the lowest caste, the Valmiki, are often forced to exist by scavenging and cleaning sewers. Hundreds of thousands of Indians are still thought to make their living as scavengers, emptying toilets by hand or cleaning septic tanks and sewers without protection. Hundreds of them die every year and they can't just get another job because no one will hire anyone that low on the caste system, so they're forever trapped. Chocolate rain. And more than past and lost. This is a clear reference to the Civil Rights Act and the fact that people think that racism can be ended with marching and legislation, which obviously we're seeing now because the Civil Rights Act was passed decades ago and yet it seems comparatively little has changed, given the recent revelations over police brutality and treatment of people of colour. Chocolate rain Remake how we got to where we are Break the chains, undo the system, rebuild society around compassion, and rid ourselves of the legacy of the past. It's the only way to truly end systemic oppression. Chocolate rain your All art is political. Chocolate Rain is about systemic racism and is even more relevant today than it was in 2007. Support the protesters, donate if you can, and fight for justice. So this record is in honor of George Floyd and I really hope we can see more unity and more peace when already things are so difficult. So shout out to his family. difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream.